Hey guys, this is Tom Box. Welcome to MC.TV, and today we have uh, a back-to-back -back YCS topper, Anthony Zhu. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you for having me on your channel. No, thank you for joining on because you offered me a lot of entertainment when I got to see your deck in action. And not only was it very interesting and very different from a lot of the decks out there, you weren't going Sword Soul, you weren't going with Tri Brigade. Instead, you played Cybers and you hit back to back tops and you went X1 on both tournaments YCS in December and the one in January as well. So, this is fantastic. So how are you feeling with the double tops and how do you feel about your deck? Uh, I feel really good about the double tops, obviously. Um, and I feel that this deck is, I don't know, it, it feels a little magical to me that I, I was able to top. Uh, but I built this deck heavily considering a lot of the current matchups. Or not current, <laughs> a lot of the pre matchups of the previous format. And I felt like I did a good enough job scrimming and then like coming up with the different tech choices and overall I, it just feels really nice that uh it finally pays off and uh, i get back-to-back -to -back tops congratulations man for sure amazing not only did you survive going all the way to the end you also survived the massive wait times in between those tournaments and you know props to you props to you now this is a cyber deck teched with eldritch and based off of how I saw you play it, it was just something completely different. And guys, I know the ban list is coming out. So we are doing a double feature on this particular deck profile. We're going to see your YCS record. We're going to set that in stone, put that into history. And we're going to look at how you're moving forward with the uh, this cyber deck of yours. So you know what? Uh, we already know that you went X1 through Swiss for both tournaments. So you also hit top 16 in both of them. So this is really good. So you know what? We're going to get started with some shout outs first. Of course, let's not forget that. You know, the floor is yours. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Uh, I first want to shout out to my play group. They've been very kind. They've been offering me a lot of help. They've been screaming me at, at every chance. Like I would get off of work or university and then I would go home and then I would, and almost every single day we'd be having remote duel mm. and it really helped me get ahead of the format and know what was, what to prepare for and how to play around everything. And then a second shout out to the two locals that I go to, Gamer's Choice and Xeno Zero. Uh, the people there have been, uh, they were really good opponents and helped me improve a, a lot, both in remote and in real life. That's fantastic. And let's actually start off by jumping into your YCS top profile. Now, this, there's slight changes between January and December. I think when we're just looking at your, this is your January list, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, this is the January list. Uh, the December list is a little different in that instead of playing the DD Crow, I was playing Gammas. Uh, instead of having the Lancia in the main, that Lancia was in the side. You see the side there, I have one Harpy's Feather Duster. That card did not exist. That was the third Lancia. And in that place, I had the third Gamma. Um, I did not have three Eldlands. That, at that time, I could not find my third. I only had two. And in that place, there was one copy of the Counter Trap, Golden Land Forever. I did not decide to include Dotscaper. Uh, in that place was uh, Psyframe Driver. Uh, and the second Dotscaper, I think, was just nothing. I only ran 41 cards. Okay. Um, and this is th this was all the changes that I made, uh, jumping from the December list to the January list. Okay. And uh, feel free to ask any questions. All right, so why don't we go through this? Now, starting off with a pair of Eldritch for the Eldritch part of the namesake of the deck. Uh, then we have the DPE package of Destiny Hero Dasher and one Celestial. I think pot agree. this is a true pot agree where you do get a plus two off of this. Artifact Scythe. You have a Scythe lock in your package as well. Now, you have a lot of Cybers. I want to get into your extra deck. That's where, where, that's where the key juicy part of this deck profile is. We have one Artifact Lancia. What was the purpose of the Lancia being in the main? Uh, the purpose of the Lancia being in the main is because after I uh, changed around the ratios of the deck, I found that there was a lot of hands where I can actually keep the Artifact Dagda on the field instead of having to use it as material to link for Verte Anaconda. And if Dagda survives, I can go chain link 1 DP during draw phase and I chain link 2 Dagda to set the Lancia as well. Because one of the biggest things about Eldritch is that you... If, if you if uh, any deck with Eldritch at all is that you want to side 
like banish hate for it. The cosmic is very popular. I've gotten like evenly matched sided against me before. Um, called by the grave has been sided, and mm -hmm. uh, overall, a lot of decks do banish. Like Sword Soul, especially going second, relies on their tangies so much more than going first. Tri Brigade, and um, I really like having both Scythe and Lancia active. It really hurts people, and especially since uh. People don't know that Dagda also has a special effect where if this Link Summon card is destroyed, it brings back an art. That allows me to, uh, depending on which artifact I like more, uh, threaten them with another artifact activation on their f on their fourth turn in case ah. I don't go in for the kill. One thing people should know about artifact monsters is that they don't just, they're not once per turn. <laughs> for, for like especially scythe scythe can proc multiple times even if you stop the first one so that's why yeah and it survived the ban list so uh i'm pretty sure we're gonna see a lot more of this card very interestingly there's also the signature card of your deck cybers gadget tell me more about this one uh this card is uh what uh we built the entire deck around basically as you can see this card when it's normal summoned it gets to target a level 2 or lower monster in your graveyard and you special it in defense position with its effects negated. Now, this effect you don't actually have to activate every single game. In fact, if you open with this card as your starter, this effect is not used at all. But you can see that uh, I specifically chose to run Crow and Baylor as my hand traps instead of Gamma from my December list just because those two can be pitched to the graveyard with, with ease so I can get an extra body on the field. And uh, in my December list, I, I really didn't like it that much after I topped with it because Gamma is a really hard card to get out of your hand. And most of the time, it gets banished instead of going into your graveyard. So you don't get to trigger Cyber Gadget's effect, which uh, it might not sound that bad, but that causes you to not be able to keep the Dagda on your end board. Okay, okay. And, and that is why I made the switches that I did uh, to include Crow and Valor instead of Gamma, and this all because of Cyber Gadget. Cyber Gadget on summon will reborn one if you can. If it doesn't, it sends the, if it sends to the graveyard, for any reason at all, it doesn't have to be a link material. It will produce you a Cyber token. And very importantly, this token is a light. It does matter because we do run line on the light in the extra deck. And this allows you to have at least two bodies, which you can go into your link devotee, link disciple comp, which generates you more tokens mm -hmm. and basically allows you to perform a one card dpe scythe combo in fact uh the card right after that dotscaper is also a one card dp but except this card is once per duel uh that's why we chose to run only two copies of it instead of one uh ideally you would open with dotscaper uh on your first turn and then on your second turn you would be able to use cyber gadget to to revive this dotscaper which provides you with bodies in order to go for lethal with Okay. And the two dots caper, of course, two once per duel effect where it can revive itself once from the graveyard and once when it gets banished. Fantastic card. All right. Uh, hand trap lineup. We got triple ash, double crow. You're, I think you just talked about why you chose for this lineup. And it also it's a pretty good uh, choice, especially with the matchups of, uh, well, from, I guess, now to uh, till the, the end of this current format. And then we have ourselves a triple sign at mining this is the, your way to search out your uh cyber's gadgets triple the uh, fusion destiny all right it's a very powerful card even if you draw into it it doesn't it's not like a red eyes fusion at all we can move on to our call by the grave it's called by it's protection against hand traps and perhaps uh graveyard disruption when you need it the most if you set it triple droplet so what made you choose droplet for your disruption and your counterplay in board break um i chose forbidden droplet uh one part because uh we're using the eldritch package and uh, sending eldritch cards off of droplet is really free it's the same reason why i chose to run sign at mining instead of more si uh, more copies of dotscaper for example mm -hmm. because pitching eldritch cards off of uh your discard effects allows you to go plus while uh doing impactful stuff and droplet specifically not being able to uh not being able to be responded to and more importantly not targeting is very important because we do have simorg in that format and if i had chalice in its place i would not have been able to win a lot of the games that i did 
play because I did play against quite a few bird players in the January tournament and mm -hmm. uh, Droplet being able to bypass Simorg's blanket targeting protection for every card underneath it, including itself, is a big reason why this card uh, was a part of my list. Okay. So we have, moving on, we have, of course, the uh, the Golden Land package. We have Cursed Outland. We have Triple, Scarlet Sanguine. Oh, well, I guess this is uh, Imperm, but uh, we have... Uh, two uh, Golden Land Hakueros, and we have three Conquistor, a pretty standard package, and the Triple Imperm, I think this is also pretty standard. So a 42 card list. In terms of the extra deck, we have the DPE, we have Gustav Max with the double Eldritch play. If it does come up, you can burn them for game, or you can just, well, just run people over there, <laughs> if, if it does come to that. But uh, we have Access Code Talker, the big bosses, uh, utility package for usually IP Mascarina to follow up with it, a Unicorn, Phoenix to pop back row, Lina, is there any significance to the Lina? Uh, this card's very significant. It wins a lot of my games. In fact, uh, there was one moment where in the December, uh, in my uh, December YCS, there was mm -hmm. uh, this, it was round seven, I think. It was, or it was, it was round eight. It was, it was basically right before the end of day one, X1, and I faced Sky Striker DPE. And I remember that I linked off uh, the cyber gadget and uh, the the card it summoned into a uh, into, I linked up the cyber gadget and then it got a token and then I linked those two off into Lina. I had DP on the field. He had DP on the field. And um, at that time I was running Gamma. Uh, I just called Battle Phase. I rammed my Lina into his DP and then I procced Lina's effect. I searched up a Gamma and then I declared DP effect and. In the, and now he's in a lot of trouble because if he changes his DP effect and we both die, it's my turn, so I get to call DP. And if he responds with DP, then in there I can chain the gamma that I just searched. And not <laughs> only do I disable his DP, I also get 3,500 damage in him, which is what he could not afford to take at that point. So he couldn't call the DP effect, and I could save this gamma for uh, his mm. celestial effect instead. <laughs> and uh, and another point. Uh, was it was also against Sky Striker. I, it, it, if my opponent didn't make this mistake, I would have lost that round, but it was getting close to the game and I had Lina on the field. He made access code into it. And I, he was at like around 2,000 life points left. And I was definitely going to be hit lower than that if uh, everything went through, but he popped my Lina, which allowed me to search for a Valor, and I just chained effect Valor on his access code, and he couldn't kill do enough damage to me, and I won that game by time. So oh. <laughs> Lina definitely won me two games. Okay, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, we oh. have. Oh yeah, what's up? The most important thing, Lina is the way to get into Cyber Gadget if you only see Eldritch card, because Cyber Gadget is a light monster that okay. fits Lina's search requirements. Oh, that's fantastic. I actually really like that. You know what? Gives you proper synergy, proper bridging from one of your archetype choice to the other. So, you know, that's really good. Next, we have Artifact Dagda. Okay, Dagda is Dagda. If you guys don't know what Dagda does, I don't think you played in the last couple of formats. <laughs> Next, we have IP Mascarina, which is a fantastic choice, especially when you do sometimes lock yourself under Link 2 or below, which does, does happen from time to time in this deck, right? a bit actually yeah okay so yeah we do need the lower link number for sure uh prep to plant for Tanaconda. we have a pair of link devotees this one is usually summoned under the link disciple and i believe link devotee is the reason why you can't link summon to level a link three or higher uh I, i'm pretty familiar with this card because i played with uh the evil twins and this was a card that they also play but i guess you can care to explain to people Sure. I guess a lot of people may be confused on why I played two copies of Devotee and only one copy of Disciple. Um, if you haven't seen this combo before, uh, the second Devotee is used to proc Dagda because if you read Devotee's effect on summon, he has a mandatory trigger to lock you into Link 2 or lower. This is not a once per turn because this is mandatory. So even if you have been already, mm -hmm. you still must declare this effect. So uh, that's the second copy is what makes... Uh, any of your cyber starters a one card dp plus scythe mm -hmm. so the second copy is really important but obviously the first copy is to convert two bodies into three bodies and uh link disciple being able to shuffle back a card is very significant because 
as you can see, our deck runs quite a few bricks. We don't want to see Celestial. Don't want to see Dasher. We don't want to see Scythe. Those three specifically, the other cards I'm okay with. But uh, there has been many, many games where I was forced. Uh, getting this draw helped me put back a brick for free advantage, which is honestly insane. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right, so yep. that's the Link Devotee and the Link Disciple. We also have one Link Karibo. Sorry, Link Karibo's here. One Link Spider, and also... I confused Link Karibo with Link Karibo. Sorry, guys, once again. We have a Link Karibo and a Link Karibo, Link Karibo to handle trap cards. And we have Link Karibo to convert your level 1s into the graveyard. And I think that's all. That's one of your reasons for Dotscaper. Uh, it is. Uh, mo most importantly, this Link Karibo is... The in case I have extra bodies, uh, or if I hard draw Fusion Destiny, I can stop my Verte from getting hit by a Infinite Impermanence. That's very important, and it also helps me play around evenly matched. If uh, I if they force me to go first, or I already know that they might have be a deck that might play evenly matched, uh, the card is actually really broken because people don't expect you to just have a trap negate just like that. Okay. I've played the Elvish Mirror a couple times, uh, and uh, it was exactly one time in December and one time in January. Both times, uh, this copy of Link Rainbow came in really clutch because it, it's any of your Cyber Smashers can just go into this and it makes them really hard to play around because it banishes, so they can't just chain an Elvish Trap or else they lose it. <laughs> ah. It's honestly really funny. I think I think uh, you definitely spent a lot of time just crafting this and making sure that every out was the best possible out against your opponent. In terms of your side deck now, we have Triple Nibiru, fantastic choice, uh, D-Berry to shut out, you know, Xyz, Synchros, you know, a lot of the decks only focus around one type of uh, monsters in their extra deck, so this is a, a fantastic way to shut out that particular card type. We have Triple Droll, well, I th these are kind of self-explanatory, the Duster, Full mass back row removal makes us a simplified game state possible. Uh, we have triple solemn judgment uh, for going first. I'm assuming. <laughs> I don't think you put this going in second, no. unless you're crazy. Uh, then we also have a pair of Lancia to uh, max out the total numbers of three of, for the entire deck. Well, this is really really cool. I'm going to ask you later about how your combo starts with a single cyber gadget. You want to show me that after, or tell me that after. I can tell you that after. It's All fun. right, perfect. Okay, now we're gonna jump into what are you gonna do in the near future, post February 7th. All right, now time for the double feature. We're gonna be asking Anthony here the update to his deck list post February 7th. Now, looking at what you've said to me here so far, uh, it seems like Eldritch is out and Brave Token Package is in. And you got a lot of one ofs, that's kind of a significant change. But I'm gonna run through your list here. You have one Nibiru, and okay, one Nibiru. I, I'm i guessing that's for Crossout Designator now that I'm looking at the entire list. Uh, we also have the Brave Package of Griffin Rider. Uh, we have one Scythe, one Lancia, one Dasher, one Celestial. None of these cards got banned, so that's where we're going with this. Next, we have our Triple Cybers Gadget. Well, once again, still a very fantastic card. And this is a new member to this lineup. The new member to the lineup is going to be Firewall Guardian. So what's up with that? Okay, so uh, this card, I took great inspiration uh, from the OCG, and uh, I also uh, considered, because I, I, I already knew about this card uh, in December, but I chose not to play it because uh, Cyber, uh, Signet Mining was just better with the Elvish package, because you wanted to search better Cyber's cards. Uh, Firewall Guardian kind of activated in Grave, so you could like, uh, like DD Crow it, I didn't like that, because... And, and then, like, it it banished itself from the graveyard after the use. It's not actually that good. But uh, since we can no longer afford to play Sign and Mining, we have to... And I, I, I would still like to keep the eight one-card starters. Um, th this is the newest package. He also uh, is a one-card DP Scythe. And most importantly, he also does not proc the Brave Restriction of not having your normal summon monster not being able to activate its effects uh i know i said before that cyber gadget does something on normal summon but it's an optional effect and we don't have to do that and for this list for and and for this deck we probably won't be doing it that's why uh we cut the crows um 
because we don't we no longer needed a mass of level one or lower or level two or lower monsters that we can bring back with gadget because we probably won't be activating that effect anymore okay uh then we have of course triple water in trenches of the temple uh good luck getting your copies everybody uh and then we have triple ash as your hand trap triple dot scaper now you bumped it one to replace one of your sign at minings uh triple veiler you have a ghost ogre in here and if you can talk about it if you want but we can move on if you don't want to uh pretty simply ghost ogre counters brave because it stops uh faithful adventure which uh this is the only hand trap that can completely stop the brave engine no matter what part of it you draw uh, cards like Ash Blossom uh, are sometimes no good because if you Ash the Enchantress, I might hard draw the right of Aramisha. And uh, the earliest you can Ash 100% is when I activate the Faithful Adventure, but I might hard draw the Griffin. Like, uh, your Ash might completely fizzle depending on what I hard draw, but Ogre will never have that impact because because Ogre will always, always get rid of the Faithful Adventure, which is the problem card. Okay, and even though it's just a one of, just be careful. Double fusion destiny because it's now semi limited. People thought it wasn't gonna get touched. It's gonna get an OTS copy. The OTS doesn't matter. <laughs> That's this is just proof that it doesn't even really matter. Uh, it's Edge. It's Edge. Uh, then we have Right of Artem Artemisia or uh, Aramisir. Then we have one copy of Call by the Grave. We are playing Triple Crossout Designator. What made you switch to the Crossout package to for, for protection? Um, it's one because uh, the Brave package is smaller than the Eldritch package, but number two, this is a, a lot more theory, and this only works if uh, it turns out the meta is as I theory crafted that a lot of people will be using Brave, because uh, if we're facing a lot of Brave mirrors, cross out designator suddenly goes up a lot in value because I can cross out my opponents by the Baron uh I can cross out my opponents Water Enchantresses of the Temple. Uh, I can cross out their Ghost Ogres that they might use to destroy my Faithful Adventure. Uh, I might be able to cross out a Nibiru if they have a combo draw of Imperm plus Nib, which destroys almost every single deck. Uh, uh, I just wanted protection because uh, with the addition of the Griffin to protect your, um, your DP Scythe on your opponent's turn, I am very confident that it's basically an FTK. As long as I can protect that, that it goes through, there is almost no way I'm going to lose. Okay. And since the Griffin and the uh, Avenger token are both 2,000 attack and uh, TP is 2,500 and Scythe is 22, as long as three out of the four stick, uh, you're just dead that turn. And even if you remove one of them, I can easily get uh, that much attack with one normal summon. Uh, it's, it's very... It's very quick. It, 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 it's a super quick kill. We stun on turn two. We kill on turn three. We don't give them any chance to fight back. We we, we dash her to draw two, and then we just overwhelm them with resources. Okay, fair enough. One chalice, and also potentially just more cross out, more cross out options. And we have the triple droplet. We have the brave package. One of the Draco back, and one of the faithful adventure, and one infinite imperm. Like, you do have a wide variety. Like, if, if I still count the hand trap, you still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you include Scythe, uh, not Scythe, if you include Lancey, it's about 10, which is still actually a pretty solid line of hand trap. Although, there are ones that are kind of one ofs, but a lot of them have overlapping, like, uh, uh, effects or rather overlapping like utility all right in terms of the extra deck, nothing really changed here except that there's no longer a gustav max in there and there's a cerberus in place of that everything else here is the same yeah nothing much else to add here like, you're still doing the cyber stuff yep. among your cybers cards well i'm looking forward to seeing how this one performs and uh maybe your theory crafting is right i really love how you're choosing to use the cybers to actually perform all this stuff you're, you're giving cybers a really really good representation and uh maybe we'll see a lot more cybers players because of you uh it's uh it's uh really funny because uh uh the original story behind this was uh when right before like two two or three days before the ycs december for december began uh i couldn't really find a deck that i really wanted to play and then uh one of my uh friends from uh one of my uh, discord servers that i chat on mm -hmm. nick uh, he first introduced me to this deck. Uh, he topped a tournament with it, um, a, a IRL case event with it. Uh, 
that week and it was a very basic build uh it was not refined and then i was like yolo i'll pick it up see how it does i okay. went to locals that day i topped locals with it or i i top i like went basically undefeated uh and i and I, I was like, wait, this deck is kind of nice. And then I, I just basically scrimmed with a lot of people in the past, in the last two days. And this was how we came to the conclusion. And I really do thank Nick for showing me the deck. And uh, this is this is the final like, final product after the final form. all the testing. <laughs> yep. So much has changed. We added so much. We removed so many like cards that we thought was bad. Uh, well, I would say to the people on Master Duel, good luck trying to pick this up. You guys know Cyber's gadgets are ultra rares on Master Duel. Yep. And uh, I'm not just uh, making this up. I actually do have the core in front of me in real life right now. I am testing. I am trying to improve this deck. Uh, maybe uh, it, It's all theory in the end. This might not be the final version of the deck, but this is what uh, I will be attempting to uh, see if I can improve on. All right, fantastic. I mean, hopefully, there's going to be a lot more Cybers players. Before we go going, we do have one thing I want you to just tell me the line here. Say I started with the Cybers gadget. What do we do? You normal summon Cybers gadget. Yep. Uh, let's assume you have nothing in the graveyard. You link it off for Link Disciple. Trigger its effect. Get a token. You link that off into Link Devotee. Trigger the on summon effect. And then Link Disciple effect. Tribute the Link Devotee for cost. Draw one, put one back. Mm -hmm. When Link Devotee is tributed on a new chain, activate its effect give you two tokens, mm -hmm. you're locked into link two or, or lower that turn, you will go ahead and then act, uh, link off one token and the disciple for Dagda, you link the other token into link devotee, triggering its effects and then chaining Dagda, setting the scythe, and then you go Dagda and the link devotee into Verte, and then Verte and Fusion Destiny, that's the one card combo. And then if you, let's say uh, previously in my list, if I activated Valid or DD Crow, or uh, it was, uh, or I conveniently did have a level one in the graveyard, I would normal summon the Cyber's Gadget, special summon out the Dotscaper or any level one, uh, still do Disciple Devotee. But remember, uh, when I get to the uh, Dagda, I still have a, let's say a Veiler and then a token. In that case, I would go the token into Link Spider or Link Karibo, and then I go Veiler plus the uh, Link Monster I just made to Verte. And then I chain link one Verte, chain link two Dagda to set the Scythe. And then on my opponent's turn, I chain link one DPE, chain link two Dagda to set the Lancia. But thank you for coming on, Anthony. And uh, that's all we got for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, learned a lot about the Cybers uh, version of playing, uh, I guess, Lynx. Like, this is truly Cybers. I don't think anyone else has been playing Cybers like this. Most people that are playing Cybers, they're either playing Attic Nister, they're playing Code Talker. This is none of those. That's what makes this one super special. And uh, thank you for sharing with me. Thank you for coming onto the video. And uh, hopefully you'll perform even better in 2022. And thank you very uh, much. that's all I got for this one. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.